If you are born male, you are born with a more efficient neuromuscular situation, more efficient neuromuscular efficiency, more efficient neuromuscular recruitment, more efficient use of your muscles than you are if you're born female. This is not my fault. This is just an observation of the facts. It's borne out by all of the phenomenology, okay? Uh, first off, we'd like to discuss is standing vertical jump test numbers. Now, the standing vertical jump is an interesting test that is pretty much a direct measurement of the genetic endowment for neuromuscular efficiency. What the standing vertical jump measures is the difference in the height of the upraised hand, one upraised hand when standing flat-footed on the ground, and the height that that upraised hand is carried to at the top of a flat-footed jump with no step. The standing vertical jump is performed by reaching down to the bottom of, of the of the range of motion that is, represents the most efficient stretch reflex for the hips and legs, and leaving the ground and measuring the distance between the top of the hand at the, at the, at the, the difference between the top of the hand uh, from the standing position to the position in which the jump carried you up in the air. In other words, it is a, it is a direct measurement of your ability to accelerate your body's mass off the ground. Your body's mass off the ground, which occurred on the concentric portion, during the concentric portion of the upward part of the jump. A counter movement jump lasts a half second. And the last half of that movement pattern is the concentric part that extends the knees and the hips. And the force expended during that concentric movement upward is the, is the part of the, of the movement that takes place in about a quarter of a second, during which all of the force production machinery that you can uh, recruit into contraction is recruited into contraction. And the distance it carries your body's mass up in the air is a direct measurement of the efficiency with which you were able to contract your muscles in a very short period of time. This is a direct measurement of explosion. And this is why the NFL includes the standing vertical jump test in its combined battery of tests. They want to know who they're hiring. They want to know the, the genetic endowment for rapid, efficient, neuromuscular recruitment of motor units into contraction that they're hiring. They don't hire people with a 22-inch standing vertical jump. They hire people with a 36-inch standing vertical jump. Now, there are exceptions to this in terms of field position, but the vast majority of professional football players have got very good vertical jumps, which means they're over 32. The average standing vertical jump for a male and by average, I mean young men in college who are tested for this sort of thing. Not old guys like me, but young men in college is 22 inches. That's the average. In contrast, the average female standing vertical jump is 14 inches. Now, we use the standing vertical jump test because the standing vertical jump test is not really trainable. It's very simple. There's not any technique to learn. You reach down and jump up. It can't be gamed. It can't be improved much without quite a bit of strength training. But the most important thing about this is, is that even the best strength training program in the world will only improve a standing vertical jump test 20, 25% at most. And it's far more common to see improvements of 10 to 15%. In other words, this thing is not trainable. This thing called neuromuscular efficiency is not trainable to any significant degree. To the extent it is trainable, it is improved by the increase in force production that is provided by an effective strength program. But the difference between 
the average men's 22-inch standing vertical jump and the average women's 22, 14-inch standing vertical jump is an extremely important piece of data. Now, if you look at the records, the outstanding records for this thing, the men's record for standing vertical jump was set in a combine, in an NFL combine back, I believe, in two in 2015, it's been a while since we looked this up, but I think it was back in 2015, guy jumped a 46-inch vertical on a vertex. I mean, a real, actual, no shit, 46-inch standing vertical jump, which is insane, but he did it. The only women's record that I've been able to locate was a 29 and a half performed by a, a female thrower, I believe, or a sprinter. I can't remember her, her actual sport, but it was at OSU. And that's been about 15 years ago. 29 and a half. Now let's look at these numbers. 29 and a half, the women's record, exceeds the men's average by quite a bit, doesn't it? By seven and a half inches. Okay. But if you look at her 29 and a half and you compare that to his 46, what you see is roughly the same percentage between average and record that in both sexes. Okay. This is explained almost entirely by the in utero changes that are produced by testosterone before birth. In other words, if we give a female anabolic steroids and testosterone, it doesn't appreciably affect her standing vertical jump at all. All right, now keep that in mind as we go through the nonsense that we are hearing in the media these days about this sort of thing, okay?